Good evening, all. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about biohacking and um, body modification. And, um, but first, I want to start up with a question. And the question is, would you want your children to be safe at all times and that you know where you can find them if necessary? That's the question. Just think about it, and we'll get back to that. Um, I started doing uh, piercing uh, like 10 years or a bit more uh, ago, and then started uh, uh, doing body modifications as well. And just for appearances, to, be, to look nice. And um, we dye our hair, uh, we, we change the way we look. In my world, we can change the way we look a little bit further. We can cut up a tongue, split it, I'm not going to show you. Um, uh, <laughs> and um, we can do tattoo and piercings and subdermal implants as well, like silicone implants. Um, and doing this, I got involved with uh, Amal Graafstra and um, the guy on the left. Um, he's a biohacker, a grinder that is. And um, what is biohacking? Biohacking is trying to alter the state of your body. And um, we can do that via nutrition and um, uh, looking at your sport watch that, that uh, indicates what heart rate you got and if it's still healthy or not. And um, well, while talking to him and uh, to Amal Graafstra, we were talking also a little bit about proximity identification. And uh, proximity identification, you know, um, we got keys. We all got keys, and, um, but they're old. They're, they're in existence for like hundreds of years. Um, and I think we can change some of these things. Um, we got bank cards, you got your Oyster card for public transport. Um, how many of you people lost your keys once in their life? Forgot the passport while going to the, the airport? I think I got the answer. Um, um, we're, we're connected, and um, um, so I mixed up the slides. Uh, so, um, uh, we're, we're, we're connected to, to a lot of things. Our telephone is connected to, to the internet, and um, um, our washing machine is getting connected to the internet. The internet of things, but we're disconnected of it. Um, we, s we still have to. We still have to press a button um, uh, to do um, to turn on the, the, the washing machine and uh, to have it interact with the internet and these kind of things. Human ev evolution is at a standstill. We're not going to grow like these kind of things into our body. Um, circuit boards, it's never going to happen. So we, we're going to have to implant stuff into people. And this is an implant. This is a near field communication, RFID, um, radio frequency identification implant. Um, I've got one in my hand. I've got multiple in my body. Uh, what do I do with it? I use it to open my car. Um, so I don't use keys anymore. I do have a key though, but it's just for fun, just for the show. And I brought a lock. So what can I do with a key? Hey, there's no keyhole anymore. Um, now it opens. It works. But what happens when I left my key at home? And I just got out of the door, the door closed, I can't get in anymore. I brought my own key. Bleep, come on. And now I can open the door again. So I think that's the way to go. Um, we're going we're gonna to put our bank cards onto an implantable chip. We're going to use it as a house key. You're going to uh, use it to, uh, to unlock uh, your, your laptop or when you're at the desktop at, at work, that then the desktop knows it's you uh, instead of your colleague. And um, I think that's nice. 
I think that's, that's the way of the future. We're not gonna use keys anymore. They're outdated, I think. What's gonna be next? This is a real nice implant. Um, it's the North Star uh, V1, made by Tim Cannon and his team, uh, Grindwork, uh, uh, Grindhouse Wetware, and, um, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This only has LED lights. It's really nice. It's nice to show off in the body modification world, in my world. Um, the next version, the next step, is there's going to be a heart rate monitor in t inside, uh, blood oxygen monitor inside, and um, uh, a pedometer, so it counts how many steps that you did. And um, so it knows how many calories you burned that day. Maybe it's going to have a GPS tracker as well. So I can hear you think, a GPS tracker. Shit, they're going to follow me everywhere. So the government knows where I am. I don't want that. Why wouldn't you want that? I think in future generations, there might be a possibility that that's going to happen. Government regulated. Do we want that? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but would you want your children to be safe? and that you can always know where they are. When there's a GPS tracker inside of the body of your kid, and um, your kid is at the playground, it's just playing around, fooling around, having fun. But then there's somebody else, maybe, maybe even a registered sex offender, going up to that playground with bad intentions. And the government knows he's approaching the playground, we are where he's not supposed to be. Would you want your children to be safe? If you have a GPS tracker, um, the government knows. They can interfere. And I think, I think that's fun. That's good. So we're connected via telephone, GPS tracker. You can find anybody, everywhere. And I think that's food for thought as well. Are you scared of having an implant which can track you at any time? What, when we're talking about our children, would we want our children to be safe? I do. I do. At the cost of lots of things that the government knows where I am, where I am as well. I don't care. Um, Actually, that, that, that was the talk. <laughs> so, thank you very much.